Welcome to the Confidence Through Health Podcast. My name is Jerry Snyder. As a health, wellness, and sports performance coach, my goal each week is to bring you experts to help you take control of your health and build your self-confidence. Thanks for including me today on your journey to better health. I'd like to thank our sponsor for this episode, All In Health and Wellness. If you're looking for a health coach, you're looking for a sports performance coach, you're looking for nutrition guidance, like for instance, a meal by meal plan that will help you understand how to eat, it will teach you how to eat, and it will give your body, your cells, the proper nutrition to feel great and be able to perform at your best, not just physically, but also emotionally and mentally. If you're looking for those things, you're looking for the key to improve your sports performance, both from a nutrition standpoint and an exercise physical standpoint and a mental standpoint as you approach your athletic event. All In Health and Wellness is able to help in these areas. Go to allinhealthandwellness.com and you'll find the contact information for how to get in touch with them and get started on the plan that will improve your life. Well, thank you so much, Angela, for being a guest again on the Confidence to Health podcast. Thank you again, Jerry. Great to see you, to be here, yeah. sharing the ancient wisdom. Well, and that's 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 like a really great, you know, start because I, I really want to get into like, what is that difference? Like we were talking about a little bit before we started recording is like, our country is so new, but yet we we seem to have forgotten the ancient wisdom from other countries and it's almost like we're 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 too high on our own horse type of thing. It's like, oh no, we can't do that. We're a new country. We have to do the new things. It's <laughs> like the old stuff works. Like, why are we forgetting about the old ancient Eastern medicines? Yeah, it's a great question. I think you hit the uh, core of almost like human psychology. Mm -hmm. uh, I have to say, this is not only limit. Your observation is. That on, and it's not only limit to how we view, how should we improve our health and wellness. It comes to even like in the business world, especially yeah. among entrepreneurs. I'm sure, you heard about the sound shining ball syndrome. Yep. It's like little yep. little little kid, right? Keep chasing wallet that new toys, right? right? When when the kid received that gift, that toy, then play for an hour, maybe a day or two, Yeah. Eh, put it in the corner, like what happened in the Toy Story. Right? Yep, yep. And that's, I think, as just human beings, we like to adventure mm -hmm. new things. We like, we're curious by nature. Right. However, on the other side, you know, we kind of just feel like the old wisdom is there. I already know. I don't have to study it. I don't mm -hmm. have to like try to practice because I already know. Right. However, we forgot about when it comes to health and wellness, uh, the old wisdom, um, we are actually, is not because it's there, then we're going to utilize it every day. It comes to like a daily practice. It's a habit. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like if we have the habits like myself, including myself, use device, cell phone screens, mm -hmm. Right. We call it a 3C. Right. <laughs> we, we use it, if not uh, every uh, minute, we use it pretty much every hour. I mean, oh, yeah. I'm like that, which I know it's not right, but I can't change that. Right. right. So unless we purposely were mindful, have this mindfulness in terms of uh, go back to the old practice or the ancient wisdom, which is really simple. It's like connect with Mother Nature. Mm -hmm. Eat the real food, which is the whole food. Right. That's the way this body has been built. You know, our cells are involved yeah. that way. <laughs> we yeah. were not chewing a bunch of chemicals, processed right. the food for millions of years. So, but people forget about that. And especially in the industry, right? Mm -hmm. The mentality is uh, we want the trendy the catchy words that we can yeah. put in the marketing message, right? Yeah. Because nobody wants to talk about, oh, cook your carrots with whatever. Oh, yeah. you know, nothing exciting about that. Right. You want to talk about, oh, it's trying to die. Yeah. For example, uh time restrict, you know, eating diet, yeah. right? Right. Well, 
is this new? We know it's not new because no, breakfast <laughs> means way more fasting. We right. do it at night time. And right. then when we get up in the morning, we break that fasting. Yep. It's that simple. And now suddenly it becomes a new discovery. People is like, oh, I'm so excited. It really works. Yeah. That's supposed to be your, your pattern anyway. Yeah. But on the other side is that finding, hunting for that catchy words, the sexy words that we can feel like we can send a marketing message through, uh, get people hooked mm -hmm. and start to spend money on the product. That mentality, I think, is the driving force of yeah. what you observe. Yeah. It is market-driven mentality, shining ball syndrome. Of course, it's a human psychology, but... Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I'm not happy with my business right now. Yeah. Well, something else like AI is so trendy. Let, let mm -hmm. me do up AI, right? <laughs> Which is going to make everything great. Yeah. Obviously, we know that's not true. Sure. <laughs> um, so I think it's a mind, it's a mindfulness in terms of how we should respect our own body. Yeah. yeah. Well, and and you bring up a great point. And one of the things that 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 I've talked about before, and that like if you if you look at a baby. Right. And, and for parents out there, like we all have lived through the the infant who like wakes up at two o'clock in the morning screaming because they're hungry. And it's like, you know, it in kids, though, before they go to school. They have unless we force it upon them, they have no concept of eat three meals a day. They just like they'll come into all of a sudden it like, you know, it could be two o'clock in the afternoon. I'm starving. I'm hungry. I need something to eat. You know, and it's like, or, but then they'll, they could also last, you know, for hours with nothing if they're busy, occupied, mm -hmm. you know, but then we get into school and we're like, okay, well, you have to eat breakfast before you go to school. Then we're going to force you lunch at this time at school because we're supposed to have a break. And then, you know, you, you get home and either you snack or you have dinner and, and we get into this three meals a day, which, well, it works for some people, but it's not necessarily the the ideal way that we, you know, because if you look at people back in the, the ancient agrarian days or, you know, it's like they ate based on when they were hungry, mm -hmm. right? They ate based on like, I, I work to this much. I have to replenish because my body's wearing down, I'm getting tired. I go take a nap. Like there wasn't as much of a structured, you know, eating system. And I think sometimes that, that by itself, like takes us off track. From a health standpoint yeah i'm glad you raised that point because recently i mean i just did a short video clip on our social media and talking about why the far east uh healing practice not just limited to china but in india and japan mm -hmm. korea we emphasize on regular schedule i i don't have a regular schedule i have to confess yeah and i really try to dig deep into that um, because I do see, like you said, everyone is different. Mm -hmm. Everyone is different. Uh, for example, my parents, they eat very regularly. They have fixed breakfast time. Yeah. They never skip breakfast. They always skip lunch because mm -hmm. even though my dad is turning 90, 90 years oh, old wow. this year, my mom's just four years younger. Mm -hmm. Well, they still, they're constantly learning. <laughs> Funny yeah. thing is they still go to their local community college. They still try to learn things. Wow. <laughs> yeah, at that age, probably older, they're the elder, elder, senior, senior student in class. Yeah. But on the other side, they skip lunch because they said, we're just, we're too busy. We don't have time to eat. Mm -hmm. I'm like, whatever. And then they have a very early dinner. You know, we yeah. call it the senior, senior dinner time, oh, right? 4 right. ish Then they don't eat anything until they go to bed, maybe around 10-ish. Right. So this routine really helps them. Mm -hmm when they're just at that age and they are used to their life because it's just less, less one thing they have to worry about. It's almost like right. we, we we can't keep up with our ever changing schedule, right? It right. puts anxiety onto us. Yeah. On the other hand, like you're exactly right. I think when I read the history about the three meals per day, it was introduced, first introduced by Napoleon when he was utilizing, moving his troops to invade Russia. Oh, wow. like, yeah. They, and he realized because what happened is before that, 
people were eating maybe just most one or no more than two meals a day because there wasn't abundant food and people don't have time to cook three times a day. Back then, you couldn't right. go to grocery store, pick up a yeah. sandwich. It wasn't right. like you have to homemade everything. And then until then, he realized, you know, in order for my shoulders to my my troops to perform better on the battleground, I need to feed them more. Right. Therefore, they have more energy. So he started to introduce these three meals a day type of, and they have dedicated cooks to cook for right. for for the whole troops. However, um, I think in the modern day, I think you just have to take it. I mean, this is my take. I feel mm -hmm. like that's the part I kind of agree and disagree with the ancient wisdom. The the reason upside is because our body is operated by this like biological clock. It's just like right. we have fixed time. If we keep a regular schedule, it helps our body kind of like wake up at the same time. We feel tired, sleepy at the same time. It mm -hmm. helps us to keep this really nice sleep pattern, which we all know sleep, the resting is so important for our brain and for right. our physical body. Uh, and then the same thing, the, the wisdom beliefs for our digestive system, because if our system knows, okay, roughly this is the time I have to release all those digestive enzymes, right. the energy will go to your digestive tract to support that action, break down, you know, break down the foods, break, you know, so our cells right. can absorb the nutrients. It says that regularity is really helpful yeah. for, for us to keep a very healthy, strong digestive system. Yeah. And I do see that with my parents. Mm -hmm. With myself, I think the problem with me is my ever-changing schedule. Yeah. <laughs> like I had that. So that means I have to solve that problem right now. I right. don't have time to eat, then my time just keeps shifting. Yeah. However, what I try to do is if my time try, you know, my mail time is never consistent, it's hard to be consistent, then I try to just buy down small portion size. Right. Like right. healthy snacks. Yeah. Could be my smoothie, the Kariva smoothies, mm -hmm. or I like those wasabi wasabi beans. Oh yeah. Soybeans, dried uh, black yeah. soybeans, sesame uh snack. I home make sesame energy bar. I'll be happy to share the recipe oh, cool. with you if you want. Yeah, it's, I mean it's really tiny. I mean, each bar probably I did a rough calculation of the calorie is less than 80 calorie. But if you chew on two bars, it gives you Long-lasting energy mm -hmm. and enough calcium for women to right. support. I don't even, I don't take any calcium supplements at all because sesame seeds seeds are very rich in minerals. Yeah. Uh, I'm just saying then don't maybe eat like a big meal. Yeah. If you keep like I eat eleven today lunch, the next day one o'clock, next day two o'clock. I mean yeah. it's all messed up. Your body yeah. gets really confused. The key is to maintain a stable blood. Uh, sugar level. Right. That's the key. Right. Because if our blood sugar level keep frustrating, it produces this stress. Yeah. On our pancreatic, you know, hormone system. Right. Uh, insulin, all those, you know, um, yeah. That's that's the thing you try to avoid. I would right. say just tailor tailor to each everyone's schedule. Because last thing I see is like I do have lots of health nuts friends, and I have friends would go extra miles like mm -hmm. when she travels she would carry prepare every meal that she oh, doesn't wow. go to any restaurant yeah. to eat doesn't want to eat hotel food however right. she has to pre-pack so yeah. many things mm -hmm. to the extent i was like does this cause stress to you girl right right <laughs> and i was like okay i understand you want to be conscious but to the extent that you don't want to become a burden to you it's like right. you constantly check you know, like, is yeah. this going to harm me or right. do good things to me, right? I mean, sometimes yeah. you just have to be a little bit flexible. It's yeah. a balance. It's a fine balance. Well, and if you're if you're there in that healthy state, you know, 80% of the time, 85% of the time, whatever it is, and then you travel and that that changes it because like, okay, I'm eating out somewhere where maybe I don't have control over, are they truly using organic foods or... Maybe yeah. they're preparing it differently than I would, um, you know, and so that 10 or 15 or 20% that you can't control 
but if your body's understanding and healthy and I, like you can handle that little exactly bit jerry of, like that's a, i mean you you just know this i, I feel like you have great <laughs> intuition on that well, here's the thing, because what you said, it actually comes to our, everyone understand the uh, good bacteria versus the bad right. bacteria in our digestive tract, right? Microbiome. Yep. Yep. So it's a balance. So as soon as we have the majority, let's say even 60, 40%, because mm -hmm. it's impossible. If you only have good, there's something weird there. Right. You probably not going to feel well. Yeah. <laughs> it's a balance. Like they kind of balance each other. So yeah. if you have 70% good versus 30%, I'm just through a thick on the ground. Here's the thing. When you travel, you might be eating some comfort foods, right. including junk foods. Yeah, That's okay. Right. Because you know what? It's not going to destroy your healthy micro, I mean, right. uh, biome. Because what happened is your good bacteria know how to handle this. Mm -hmm. They may not like it for a day or two, but they are very zealous. They're going to come yeah. back. Yeah. You know, after you go home, resume yeah. your healthy eating habits. Uh, but when you add lots of stress, that stress hormone is super damaged to them. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. <laughs> right. And that's like you just said, like the last thing you want to do is, is get rid of or damage too much of your good bacteria. Like, you know, they're, they could fortify themselves. They can handle it. But exactly. it's sort of like, you know, whether it's stress or... You know, a lot of people ask me, you know, okay, well, I, I got this, this, um, this illness. And so they put me on antibiotic. What do I do? I'm like, well, you know, take the antibiotic. If you're, if, if it's, if it's an acute thing and you need it, like take it, but at the same time, do something from a food standpoint to help your good bacteria. Cause an antibiotic is going to kill bacteria. It doesn't care if it's good or bad or whatever it is. It's just going to kill it. Yeah. And so like try to help your good bacteria through the food you're eating so that your recovery not only from a standpoint of like you're recovering from the virus or the illness or whatever it is, um, but you're also going to be able to boost back to optimum health quicker afterwards. Yeah, so well said. Again, uh, I think, again, if you go back to the history, why humans' lifespan prolonged dramatically after mm -hmm. we invented antibiotics? Because in the old days, in Stone Age, right? Yeah. When we were living in the caves, the disease that actually kill us was deadly infection. Yeah. We got hurt, we got injured just by walking with bare food in the woods. Yeah. Uh hunting animals. You know? right. Um, and then those deadly wounds killed us. Yeah. And since we invented the antibiotics, we kind of prolonged lifespan dramatically. Mm -hmm. However, I do realize because it's a balance for even for my own kids. I don't give them antibiotics unless it's absolutely necessary. Right. However, it's not like, because I read, I heard this a lot during lots of talk. They say, if you take a one course of antibiotic treatment, usually lasts from five to seven days, mm -hmm. that's enough to wipe out your good bacteria for three years. I don't know where a decade. I think I, yeah. I heard of very wide range. Yeah. I don't know that for sure. I still cannot verify that mm -hmm. data from is there was there like a bunch of clinical study to support right. it right. i couldn't find it on the other side like you said those bacteria all the bacteria living in our body their lifespan is very short 24 right. hours right fast turnover so that means they die <laughs> within day or two yeah that means if we eat right they're going to come back just right. imagine this after you treat with antibiotic okay Maybe you want to eat some yogurt fermentated like kimchi right. or whatever, homemade fermented vegetables, whatever food you enjoy. Then yeah. eat lots of, you know, vegetables, spice, fruits, rich in prebiotics. Yeah. You cultivating them again. Right. I mean, one right. thing is like, you know, if we cannot kill whatever you call it, weeds. Lots of weeds are actually good for us. Mm -hmm. If you cannot, you know, wrap all the weeds with, I mean, it's, it's, I don't believe they are that fragile. I mean, yeah. that's the point I'm making. Right. Don't feel like, oh, you know, I got this horrible infection, pneumonia. I don't want to take antibiotics. I would rather just suffer and put that mm -hmm. to the risk. Yeah. I mean, when you need it, you need it. You need right. a medical treatment. They are there for a good reason. Right. But don't rely on them 
yeah. as your health solution. That's what yeah. I mean. Yep. They're there to save your life. They are yep. not there like the painkiller. Yeah. They are not there to be to make you pain free. Yeah. You can you cannot just chew or take a pain pill every day. Yeah. You know the consequences is huge. Right. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing is that it's it's there it's there to help you in the short term fix the root cause, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you and and I've had a sinus infection before where I've gone into the doctor and I'm like, okay, I, I think it's just a sinus infection. I just want to make sure. And he's like, okay, well, I'll give you a script you know, a script for antibiotic. And the conversation typically is he, he hands it to me. He goes, I know you're not going to use it unless you get worse. <laughs> right. Cause he's like, I know what you're doing. And if you, if, if you continue to get better, that's great. It, it, you know, it'll run its course and you'll get better and everything's going to be fine. But if it gets worse, we want to stop it before it gets too bad. Exactly. Right? Cause the last thing you want to do is, is have a simple infection put you in the hospital because you didn't take advantage of there's an antibiotic out there that can take care of it. Yeah, because right? they, give, they have to give you more drugs. <laughs> right, exactly. It gets worse, you know? And so it's like, stop it when you can. Yeah. And and yeah, there's natural ways to do it. But if it's not, if for whatever reason, that doesn't do it quick enough or the bacteria you've got inside you, the infection is just too rampant before you realized it. Like take advantage of that, but then also do the other things to build yourself back up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like from a, from a, from a former researcher standpoint, like when somebody's researching this stuff, whether it's natural ways to do it, or they're looking at, you know, a pharmaceutical way to do it um, for people out there, I, I think a lot of people right now, of course, I, mean, I think everybody's heard the, you know, follow the science or where's the science behind that, or, you know, it, it's really big right now for like that piece of it. And so a lot of stuff from an ancient ancient traditional like yes there's a lot of science behind it but some of it is just like you said earlier it's just like the 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 wisdom that's passed down from person to person you know why does this work just because it's always worked right like we can go through the science of it but how much of it should we be sitting there going i need all this i need i need research after research to prove this is right or just trust the tradition and the wisdom of this is how it's always been done well, here's the thing. I think I think what we need to bottom line is we are in an area that there are plenty of information mm -hmm. we can have quick and easy and free way to access to. So one thing people have to realize science. What exactly is science? I mean, can you tell me the definition first? I always ask the people, right? I mean, here's the thing, science is not a fixed term. I mean, what we right. understand today with the tool we have now these days right. could be totally different a hundred years later. You have oh, to remember yeah. that just like back in a few hundred years ago, people believe Earth is the center of the universe. Right. But everyone believed that was true, was supported by the so-called science back then. Yeah. And then now we know that was so ridiculous, right? Yeah. But it could be the same thing. What we believe now could be 100 years or even 50 years later. People say, I cannot believe they even believe that. <laughs> but, so we have to remember that. But one thing about the ancient wisdom or the old belief or whatever, here's I always say, if you want to prove an herbal remedy works in the current clinical study setting, again, <laughs> It's impossible. Yeah. Yeah, we don't have that kind of it's because the clinical study we can do right now, we can study. I think last time when I checked, I might be wrong, up to two compounds. Okay. So but in a remedy, herbal remedy, it could be a few thousand compounds easily. Oh, right. Yeah. How do you isolate the impact? You know, how do you design those endpoints to measure? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's impossible. And they also interact with each other. The other thing right. people forgot is they actually interact with the microbiome mm -hmm. in our system. They do. Yeah. People don't realize they interact a certain way. They actually sending some, you know, they actually doing their action to those good bacteria, bad bacteria in our body. Right. And as a result, it has an impact on our body. So that's impossible to measure. I mean, on the other side. If you look at how we judge a good, for example, traditional Chinese doctor, just treatment regimen he or she prescribed to you, 
It's really simple. Does it work? Yeah. They will see you minimal in two weeks. They're not going to yeah. say, hey, wait for a year, I'll see you. No, no, no. Yeah. They want you to come back sometimes within a week or a few days, depends mm -hmm. on what they're treating. Yeah. They're going to tweak their prescription, their treatment recommendation to you. It all depends on how your body reacts. So yeah. it's really simple. If it works, it works. If it doesn't work, I'm wrong. Right. <laughs> Right. So we have to we have to make some tweak, make make a change. Yeah. And if you imagine through thousands or millions of years practice, those wisdom almost become a gold standard. So right. in the current medical treatment field, we have those gold standard like first line treatment. Right. And that's through few years or decades of clinical study. That was through thousands of years, millions of years yeah. practice. How do you dispute that? Yeah. There are lots of herbal remedies. Yeah, we still don't understand why it works. We understand a few compounds in it. Oh, yeah, that compound is whatever enzyme inhibitor. That one promotes this signal pathway. But do you understand the whole picture? No, mm -hmm. no one. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, yeah. And that's it's, and it's part of that too is that, that the body is still such a complex piece. Yeah. You know, yeah. the cell is. We can we can describe why some things work, but there's so many things that we still don't have a clue as to why this works or that works or how they interact. Like you said, it's we might be able to say, okay, this is how this works, but then when it comes to the interaction between the two, we're like, we don't know why. It just it does, right? Okay. It's like there's so many things still that out there that we just don't know, and and I think that's a big part of it. Plus, when you look at you know ultimately, even though as as much as we want to say. I live in a house. I'm I'm nice and comfortable. I'm protected from the environment and all these. We're still a a, a body that interacts with nature. <laughs> yeah. Right. And so it's like we still have to interact with nature, and it's and it and, and our body has a comfort to that. Our our cells have a comfort to that. And yeah. so you know, it, and that's one of the reasons why I say like, if we can go with a natural remedy, you're you're. You may or may not have a quicker healing than a pharmaceutical, but you're going to have a better long-term healing, typically because your body's used to those compounds and in, in, in what's in in that natural healing versus the pharmaceutical, where a lot of times they just say, "Well, we we have identified this piece of that, you know, that plant that works more, and so we're going to take that little piece out and put it in a pill, and then you know." The body's going okay well i recognize that piece but where's the other stuff yeah exactly that's that yeah that's well said and usually uh the traditional uh healing practice focus on prevention but mm -hmm. it can solve um uh, acute i mean depends on like for example fever fever caused by uh just viral infection or mm -hmm. getting a cold or flu even acupuncture a good acupuncture therapist can lower your fever and and if they overdo it, guess what? You, your body temperature can drop too much. Right. <laughs> On the other side, it's not good. Yeah. But it, it, is, it is also almost like miracle. Yeah, you don't even yeah. need, I mean, gosh. But on the other side, do you need to go find acupuncture therapist whenever you have a fever? Of course, you can, you can easily, if you have a high fever that really causes lots of issue, you can, you can take a Tylenol or whatever. Sure. I mean, as long as you don't take like too many pills a day for too yeah. long. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, that's going to damage your liver. We all know right. that all the medicine, has, all this stuff have to go through our liver to be right. to be processed and cleans out. Uh, on the other side, we do have, because I was reading lots of old case study. I mean, on records, like like 100 years old case mm -hmm. study or whatsoever that I, I could find. They're amazing pain, the remedy with pure herbal stuff. Yeah. Uh, to uh, alleviate pain. Um, I mean, based on the study that were record, I mean, the record they put, they put in those cases, amazing results. Mm -hmm. I was like, even though I, I would feel uncomfortable, just, you know, we, we should not list them on the website, you know, and then because they're, they're like a particular ingredient, it's actually a toxic, it's like a plant roots. Oh, yeah. If, if someone get, they can easily get overdosed, mm -hmm. potentially can kill you as well. Yeah. But if you use that, use that really well at the right dose combined with other herb, uh, it can really alleviate pain 
like even people couldn't even like suffer such horrible pain they couldn't do anything they could only yeah. lay there you know it's almost like they need morphine or opiate drugs to to get treated and that works well yeah. so but again those kind of uh, wisdom is just it is it is hard like you said proved by clinical study and i think the solution for for human species just my own view so that hopefully we can stay on this planet for much longer not destroy ourselves the planet the earth will always be here right but whether human will be here for another few hundred years i don't know <laughs> right because if we're always chasing the new thing the yeah. new technology, I'm sure our destination will be that <laughs> for yeah. this species. Because one thing is we cannot isolate, because here's the rule. Rule of nature, you cannot isolate a species yeah. from your living environment. That's for sure. Yeah. It's just like we can transfer ourselves to moon, maybe to Mars. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, you know, must try to do, but can we survive there naturally? Of course not. Right. So we don't want to destroy our planet to that extent that we're the only species here. Right? Well, that's time for us to go you know, yeah. to be wiped out as well. Yeah. But I think the only solution is we being mindful. We find a way because we're always curious. We always love to come up with new technology, mm -hmm. new way to understand our surrounding, ourselves, the universe. On the other side, how do we have a peace? or harmony with our nature, mother yeah. nature, with other species? That's the number one question. That's the number one, I feel like that's more urgent for us to solve than you know, we need to have the most fancy advanced AI tools. Right. Well, the in, technology in a... will come. We cannot, yeah. You cannot prevent human from advance right. you know, further. That's our nature, just being a human being. Right. Yeah. So how much of that, because, like you said, that we're we're looking for that next thing in that, and and part of it is I think part of it's our human nature, but part of it is also like we we compound that effect as we go, right? right. Like we're like, oh well, we get that next big dopamine fit, hit because we were we created this next big thing, or we like, oh now we can contact everybody at a moment's notice because we have our cell phone. Um, you know, I mean, like I remember, I mean, I'm old enough to remember, you you got in the car. And you drove cross country to grandma's house and you didn't talk to anybody. Nobody knew where you, where you were until you <laughs> showed up in the driveway. Yeah. Right? Well. Like, you know, and it's like, I remember that unless you got a flat tire or something like, and you had to get a pay phone and call somebody, but like, otherwise it's like, you, you could go on an eight, 10 hour trip and nobody knew where you were except the people in the car. Oh my God. Yeah. I remember yeah. days where I had to use the real paper map. Yeah, I, I mean, personally, I hate it because I wasn't good at it. I was like, yeah. oh, gosh, I have to pre-use a pencil to draw out a row, <laughs> write it down yeah. a piece of paper, put it right in front of me while yeah. I'm driving, and constantly thinking, oh, gosh, I'm going to miss that row. Right. <laughs> but now, but, on the other side, when the first navigation come up, I trust it too much, and yeah. frequently it took me to the wrong spot. I'm like, this doesn't look right. Right. <laughs> well, and, and like, so those advancements, and it's it's almost the same thing with food because once we try something and it's like, oh, we get that, that immediate dopamine hit, whether it's sugar or, you know, flour or whatever that's in there, that's causing that. Like, then we're, we're, we're constantly like, oh, I want that again, mm -hmm. you know, and we're constantly driving for that because of the mood that it put us in versus yeah. looking at it going, wait, but if we eat healthy, then we can live to 90 like your parents, like we can live to this long lifetime if we can maintain our our balanced health, still have those treats, but not be relying on that for our exactly. Fix. They they like my parents. They they do eat cakes. Mm -hmm. They do eat cookies. Yeah. They sometimes indulge on cookies. They're not cookie fans. I don't think they eat donuts. Oh, yeah. but <laughs> that's that's a different story. Right. But here's the thing: is is a balanced approach. Yeah. Is a balanced approach and i also have to say um uh, you know people just feels like like you said you know catching the next trend mm -hmm. it's also because people want to feel want other people view us like i'm more i'm adventuresome i'm willing mm -hmm. 
I'm willing to try new things. Nobody yeah. want to be viewed like, oh, you're like the old, uh, uh, my grandparents' generation don't want to try anything new, still right. still try to learn how to use smartphones. Right, right. I think it's that kind of mentality. The other thing obviously is because driven by the market economy, mm -hmm. We always believe the new thing is the way because we call innovation is the key to grow. Yep. yep. That's how you make money. So right. we think innovation means coming up with new things. Yeah. Uh, new discovery, new technology. But, you know, I will say innovation could be how do you make the old wisdom? Sometimes you maybe think it's the boring, same old practice, adaptable to the modern mm -hmm. lifestyle. Yeah. That's not easy because it is true. Our environment, our living condition are totally different. And many of the practice that was well written in the traditional Chinese medicine, like for example, after women gave birth, we're supposed to stay inside in the house, laying back for a whole month. It's called oh, the wow. gold month, yeah. I mean, is that true? You cannot even take a shower. Yeah, Don't ever yeah, yeah. wash your hair because yeah. it's going to cause severe headache. Why did they say that? Because they didn't have ACs. Right. So if it is during winter, harsh weather, you know, they were saying because your whole body is very susceptible to weather change because mm -hmm. your immunity is certain kind of, you're not that strong. You're more right. prone to infections, yeah. uh, changes, you know, virus attack. That was the reason, but yeah. now it's different, you know, right. so you don't have to hide in your own bathroom for a month without going to take one shower. Wow. <laughs> Not good. <laughs> yeah. But like you said, I mean, it's, it's, it's combating things uh -huh. in that current environment. And, and that's something that nowadays is like, you know, I saw somebody post a, a question on social media. I think it was two days ago. And they came across an article and they posted it and they were like, is anybody doing this? I think it's worth a shot for my health. And it was basically the article was saying, like, take your phone out of your bedroom at night and leave it somewhere else. And I'm like, well, this is this is like not new. Like this has been talked about for quite some time now. Like, oh, yeah. don't sleep with your phone next to you. Don't like keep the technology away from you when you sleep. So your body has a chance to recover one without that, like that source of of frequencies and electricity and, and, and all that, but also because of the temptation to, you know, you get restless, you wake up a little bit and you just grab your phone and all of a sudden now you're awake for three hours looking at your phone when you're supposed to be yeah. resting. I, I remember that sometimes I would receive phone calls, international phone calls in the middle of the night. Yeah. Super annoying. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh. <laughs> now I have to find ways to fall back to sleep. Right. <laughs> And, yeah. that's, and that's a critical time for our body, for our health, right? To have that overnight recovery, that time is is critical for our cells. But then, like, we disrupt it, and now it's like, okay, well, what do we do now? Like, yeah. How do we recover from that? Yeah. So, but that's all environmental things. Like, like that's part of the, we have to stay on top of how to keep our body healthy. Like, we're, we're, you know, we're both in a house. We're like, we're protected. We've got probably a good like germ, you know, not letting bugs in. And so it's like, well, sometimes we need to go out in nature and be around the bugs. Yes. Yeah. There actually a uh, study to show that the uh, metropolitan kids, why they are more prone to like food sensitivity, food allergy, mm -hmm. uh, asthma attack, you know, uh, all those things that village real kids real you know kids grow up in the villages or mm -hmm. rural areas that they have less likelihood to get those right. it's because you know you're in touch with all those stuff yeah. the stuff we cannot see with our eyes right in the, in the dirt yeah in the field yeah yeah which is actually we need it yeah we do and it's it's again it goes back to that part of nature and it's identifying the things around us, the things that we can come in contact with. And, and like you said, the things we can't see that our body's constantly identifying is this friend or foe. What do I do with it? 
you know, in, in, and it's usually not until we're sick that we go to the doctor and we get a blood test or something and they check something in or they do a culture on something. And they're like, oh yeah, you, you came in contact with this, this virus or this bacteria. And so now we have to take care of that, you know, um, because it's, it's not something that we can just do on our own necessarily. That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah. So, so what, um, you know, let, uh, common mistakes that people make with with diets and choosing a diet, like from a from an ancient wisdom standpoint, are there things that we do that we're like, you know, okay, well that that that's not tried and true, you know, and 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 I have one off the top of my head. But I, I, I want to see what you say first before I ask you about it. Ah, you mean the things we try in the past? Yep. But never work. Yep. I think one thing we tried, I mean, from what I can read, documented by uh, lots of history or legendary story, is longevity. Yeah. Whether human can live forever. Yeah. Constantly chase that longevity remedies the pill mm -hmm. that can make us somehow become immortal. Right. Um. For example, you know, actually, I use one of the ingredients in my drink, Viva, the Ashitaba. Mm -hmm. The nickname is from Japan. It's a super green from Japan. Um, that is called the longevity leaf mm -hmm. in Japan. So there's a legend that Empire Qing that was uh, about 2000 something, 2000 plus years ago, um, that he sent a whole crew, royal crew member, and the class back then, the scientists yeah. and the medical doctors to discover, he heard about this legend, there's this green little plant. If you discover, if you can have access to it, if you eat it every day, you will live forever. I think it's yeah. a human nature. When you have that much power in your hand, you don't want to die because you don't right. want to give up that power, that control right. anymore, which yeah. is really common. We see this all the time. Yep. So, and his biggest enemy back then was death. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't want to give up his power. Yeah. So, but that's how they discovered Japan, the Japan island. Mm. Yeah. I, well, they brought back something, not sure that was the Ashitaba leaf or something else. But, you know, we all know the, <laughs> what happened. Yeah. He still yeah. died. <laughs> so, yeah. so I'm just saying, and then in Europe, right, doing the Middle Evil, it, area we have all those acclimes you know try to yep. use gold or different things sometimes even mercury to yep. come with magic potion give it to the king or queen say oh this is going to make you live forever yep not sure if that helped at all we know it doesn't help so and that just tells me you cannot defeat the nature's law right why yeah. we all have to die nobody want that but that's for the reason, that's yeah. the reason that we can have children. Right. If we will have the ability to live forever, that means this species don't need to live. I mean, basically it's like right. you need to have any offspring because yeah. eventually you will use up all the resource. Right. That's true. That's true. Um, I hadn't thought about it that way, but that's that's very true. It's like, why would you need to reproduce if you're going to live forever? yeah like interesting um but so so from a from a from a like a a diet standpoint and like a um a fad diet because I, I i tend to think of it as a fad diet standpoint um but what do you think about like we talked a little bit about like the the, the intermittent fasting early on right and like the timing of it and i think i agree with you i think that's totally individualistic in and there's so many factors that go into how much you should eat and when you should eat and, and all of that. Um, but what do you think about the the recent uptick of the carnivore diet when it comes to like looking at it from an ancient wisdom standpoint? Oh, I heard about that a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I think, sorry, the, the caveman diet, it's an interesting justification. Well, here's the thing, you know, <laughs> If you, I think I did a, I, I, I look into like a, a very interesting study on vitamin C's. Mm -hmm. If you look at the uh, human 
the heritage live in Iceland. Yep. Iceland, there's a particular place in Iceland. They uh, have very little access to greens, vegetables, mm -hmm. fruits because of the climate condition. Right. Right. And most of the ground are covered by ice and snow. Yep. But their main food source is reindeers. Mm -hmm. So so the question is, well, because we know vitamin C doesn't come from, you know, you know, the belief was vitamin C doesn't exist in the animal source, right. the food source. It right. only comes from plant, you know, food source. Yep. So it's like, how come and we know if you're vitamin C deficient, that can be deadly. Yeah. Right? That can yeah. be deadly. So it's like, how come they could survive, right? right? So that was the that was the big question. And then what they find is those um, people, locals, they eat reindeer every part, you know, mm -hmm. talking about food waste because yep. you cannot afford to throw anything away. Yeah. So they actually eat the, I mean, sounds disgusting, but they do eat the reindeer eyeballs. Okay. And what the scientists find was there's a tissue behind a rectum you know, behind your eyeballs mm -hmm. has very rich, uh, fat, soluble vitamin C. Oh, wow. It's a different form of vitamin C. It's not mm -hmm. a water-soluble vitamin C that we commonly find in fruits and veggies. Right. It's fat-soluble. But because it's fat-soluble, it's much more potent yeah. compared to the water-soluble because our body actually utilizes it super well. Okay. So what they find is because they just eat that little tiny little bit and that's enough for them. Wow. So I will say the problem with that, here's the thing. I mean, I had the same question, I think, a few years ago when I had opportunity to visit um, uh, uh, a couple of places in Africa. And I was like, how come the tribes only eat animal? I mean, they do eat some plant. They do eat some right. fruit. Uh, I think roots. Yeah. They do eat some like corns. Depends on which tribes you, you go to. Yeah. Some may eat less, some may eat more. Uh, some may mainly eat um, animal-based food like milk, and they don't eat much. They they spend days one day around, you know, yeah. walk, long distance walk. Right. Probably only have a chance to eat one meal a day. And I don't know how healthy they are, but they they seem like they're fine. Yeah. So I think it depends on maybe your evolution throughout, mm -hmm. you know, your ancestors, you have the right digestive tract, the genes to handle that. Right. The genes that allow you to survive based on animal based food are all turned on. Right. And they function well, then you're fine. Yeah. Versus if you look at also, you know, regions in Asia, we so thrive the most on um, most likely plant based. We, mm -hmm. Just because you know we don't we didn't have abundant animal right. sourced food source um in our genes we all have probably the same type of gene but here's you have to remember your gene constantly get turned on and turned off right depends on your environment which mm -hmm. stage you are yeah. right i mean a simple example for women right we uh, around 12 or 14, you know, the girls start to have periods. So they become, a, you know, their productive system start right. to become functioning. Yeah. And then when we enter the menopause, those genes get shut up. It's right. just that simple. Yeah. So and they're there for a reason. The same thing could be our ability to survive on certain kind of food source. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's right or wrong answer, but I don't think that should be a reason to say I stick with carnival. I mean, right animal based food because I want to be healthy, I want to lose weight. I think that's extremely dangerous. Yeah. Well because and again, I, you don't live in that climate. Right. If I put you in Iceland or the Africa tribe, that's all you have to, I mean the probably the first few weeks or first few months, you'll feel mm -hmm. miserable. You probably right. will get sick. Yeah. Miserably sick. If you survive, maybe then you'll be okay. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Well, and I, I fully agree with that answer because some of the things that I've seen as far as like our microbiome, it, it is very much a, you know, a, a history of where you, where you came from in, and, and I think that's one of the reasons why it makes America so difficult from a nutrition standpoint, because we are such a melting pot of so many different cultures. And if you don't know where your gut came from, you know, 50 years ago, 100 years ago, 
200 years ago, then, you know, it can be very difficult to figure out like, how should I eat to be healthy? Um, you know, because there are definitely some people that, that thrive on a more, you know, animal-based, you know, nutrition. And there's some people that, that can't do it at all. And, you know, put, put the ethics aside. It's just strictly from a nutrition standpoint. It's, it, it, a lot of it comes down to what, where's your gut coming from and what did your, your ancestors grow up eating? Yeah. Yeah. Then and it, then what's your environment now? You right. Know? <laughs> right. Exactly. And like you said, cause it, if you go and try and, and put yourself in that position and it's a complete change for you from what you've been eating, uh, you know, what in, 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 in both ways, because like, let's say you're, you're somebody like, you know, where I'm from in Texas and you eat a lot of meat, a lot of barbecue and a lot of, you know, and then you go to, you know, Costa Rica or Belize or somewhere that's, they're serving you all these fresh fruits that are organic because they picked them right out of the tree that's growing right over there in the, you know, side yeah. of the, of the property. It's like, yeah, you could, you could, your gut could go, Hey, hang on a minute. Let's not do that. Like you may spend a little more time in the bathroom. Right. And it's not, it's not just because of the plants, it's because of the 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 environment that you're in. Yeah. And then you, you said it so well. You see, even like people who uh do exercise, right? If you mm -hmm. do lots of weight training, your protein intake is supposed to be a little bit higher right. compared to someone who may not, you know, just doing more maybe walking daily, right, yoga practice, much lighter type of, you know. So tailor your diet based on your needs. Yep. yep. No, I think that's huge. And, and I love that, like bringing the, the ancient wisdom into it and, in helping us stay healthy, like, and I, and I, I, you know, it's, it's one of those, what is the, the phrase? Like, if you, if you don't learn from history, you're destined to repeat it, you know? And, and I think that if we don't learn from that ancient wisdom, you know, whether it's, you know, the, the ancient Chinese medicine or the Ayurvedic medicine from India or, you know, the, the ancient um, Native American, you know, remedies for things, you know, I think when we forget that stuff, it, it, it makes it very dangerous for where we're headed as a, as a society. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Not, I mean, don't forget where we come from. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Well, Angela, I want to thank you so much for your time again. Oh, um, thank you. That was a great question you asked. We're so, smart questions too. Cool. Thank you so much. Thanks for checking out the Confidence Through Health podcast. Please subscribe, post a review, share this episode with those you love who need a little extra help with their health journey. Visit allinhealthandwellness.com to learn more about the coaching programs that I provide. All episodes are produced by the Social Media Cowboys, your source for all online marketing needs. Go to socialmediacowboys.com for more information.